Jujutsu Kaisen Zero Blu-ray is out, finally, so I can now make an animation analysis of this. First, I'm gonna talk about the elements that are not animation. This will be the review segment. If you're just here for animation, then you can skip to whatever thing I put here. So how's the story and writing? It's good. Jujutsu Kaisen always had a fairly simple story, but what elevated that story for me was the very good writing. It was always surprisingly good. Shonen anime usually have pretty awful writing. Demon Slayer is a popular example where the writing is very, very mediocre. The exceptions being the demon backstories where everything just bumps up in terms of quality, both the storytelling and the writing. Jujutsu Kaisen on the other hand has a very simple story and simplistic storytelling, but the writers then keep sucker punching you with extremely well-written dialogue. It borderline philosophical to some extent. It's nothing on the level that you would see on Reddit with 13 year olds talking about life and stuff. Nothing on that level but it's still very good. For example, when Itadori talks to his friend, I, I, I forgot his name, I can't believe I forgot his name. It's the guy who gets turned into a Pokemon. Junpei, yeah. I've always kind of disliked Batman with how he refuses to kill Joker. He might as well be Joker's wingman at this point. He lets thousands of people die because he refuses to kill this one guy. With Daredevil, the no killing rule ties up to his religious beliefs, he's Catholic. And that is an interesting concept. But the best explanation and justification that I've heard for this no killing rule is what Itadori says. But then there's Fushiguro's ideals, which is completely different. He's focused on saving people unequally, which is something I've, I really haven't seen before. And it's just so cool seeing this dynamic between them. There's also stuff like Mahito's conversation with Junpei, Nanami's backstory, Nanami's conversations with Itadori, and the dialogue between Itadori and Nobara as they are walking through the forest in the final episode. Just really high quality writing that you generally wouldn't expect from a pure shonen anime. And the movie kind of had a shortage of that. It still did have it and that's like my favorite stuff. The best written line in the movie is when Yuta says, it's Jujutsu Kaisening time. And then Jujutsu Kaisen's all over ghetto. But then the second best dialogue is when Yuta is talking about fighting and killing Ghetto. Yuta has always hated his powers because he can't control them and he keeps hurting everyone around him to the point where he tried to kill himself. And now he's finally found real friends. He's finally found a place where he fits in. He's finally found a reason to think that his life means something. And Ghetto is standing against that. And that's why he wants to kill him. It's no self-righteous bullshit like you're a really bad, bad guy and I'm the goodest of good guys, so justice must prevail and thus I have to kill you. Nothing like that. In fact, the bad guy has a line where I'm justice. It just completely flips the script there. Yuta is doing this because, well, first of all, he is a well-natured guy. He's a good guy, but he, what he's doing is for selfish reasons. And Ghetto's ideals also kind of make sense. He's gone crazy because of the stuff that he's seen normal people do to Jujutsu Sorcerers. I, I think he went a little bit overboard with the constant monkeying, but his last conversation with Gojo more than made up for it. Of course, half of it was muted, so yeah, I guess they have to set up something for season two. Now, the music was also kind of underwhelming, um, compared to the show at least. The music in this movie is good, but the show had incredible music. When I think about the show's fights, I think about, for the first thing that comes to my mind is the animation of that fight. And I can also hear the music that plays during those scenes. It's as iconic as the animation. But for the movie, there was just segments where the music was kind of meh. Um, like when I think about Gojo versus Miguel, I can see Sungo Park's awesome animation, but I don't remember the music like at all. There are good tracks, however. Rika's theme is my favorite. And Pure Love is also a really good track. Jujutsu Kaisen also does this amazing thing where the music matches the scene. So we get extremely cool stuff like this. And they continued that trend by doing that in this movie. And it was absolutely amazing. This was the best moment in the movie for me. The people in the theater that I was in, they've just lost their fucking minds, including me. And overall, this movie still feels like Jujutsu Kaisen. It feels like a two hour long Jujutsu Kaisen episode about what I expected. There is some stuff here that is carried over from the show that I don't like, like the humor, for example. The humor in the Jujutsu Kaisen show was always hit or miss. Sometimes it was really good, like some of the Jujutsu strolls. I was actually holding my belly and laughing out loud. 
but sometimes it was just, eh, that's, that's not really funny. And the movie is the same, the humor is hit or miss, but it also plays to its strengths really well. Jujutsu Kaisen had a really good horror element and the horror element in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is unmatched. It is so good. Two things about the horror stand out to me. First is Rika's curse. The juxtaposition between her monstrous body and the way she talks, like in a crazy cutesy way. It's really effective. And there's also body horror, which is again done really well here. When you get to the point where you're fapping to a Futa version of Mikasa, absolutely annihilating Armin, You'd expect to not get disgusted by anything anymore, except yourself. But there are scenes in this movie that are just genuinely unsettling. I would rather die by burning alive than have my face slowly pulled in all directions till it rips apart. Let's get into the animation now. How good is the animation? It's very good. If there's one thing to take away, that's what you need to take away. It's that it's very good. But it's also underwhelming because it could have been so much better. Now I understand why this happened. It's because the production conditions were not as good as they could be. Um, the movie released nine months after the show stopped airing and that's not much time. It's not like they had pre-production done because the show itself had a very tight production schedule. They were working until the last moment so they couldn't have afforded to do the pre-production for the movie while they were working on the show and it's because it's the same team, right? It's not like a different team did the pre-production or production. It's the same team from the show that did the movie. So without breaks, they had to work really hard in nine months to get a movie out. And the other factor being the competition. Like I said in the video that I made a couple of months back, this movie was in production during the same period in which both Chainsaw Man and Mob Psycho season three were in production. And those two shows were just inhaling veteran animators and talented webgen animators alike. And that really did affect this movie. The first thing that came to my mind when the movie ended was, that's it? Where's the Keichiro Watanabe scene, or the Tatsuya Yoshihara scene, or the Toshiyuki Sato scene? These are animators who are so good that they have the ability to immortalize animation sequences deep into your brain. But for this movie, the stuff they did was just pretty okay by their standards. Keichiro Watanabe did the small sequence with Maki, Tatsuya Yoshihara animated the first appearance of Rika, and Toshiyuki Sato did the sparring scene between Maki and Yuta. Um, that was a very important scene, but, but I still feel like the man who's capable of making this should have animated something more important. And the reason these animators didn't go all out for this movie is because they are busy with other projects. Tatsu Yoshihara particularly is the action director for Chainsaw Man. Keichiro Watanabe is a core veteran animator for Chainsaw Man and is also probably going to be animating in Mob Psycho Season 3 since he also animated in the first two seasons. Same with Toshiki Sato, he animated in Mob Psycho Season 1 and 2 and is probably also going to be a part of Chainsaw Man. So even with the mediocre production schedule, this movie could have been better if it wasn't being made in such a busy period for the anime industry. But it still, as I said before, it's very good. A lot of people are comparing this movie to Demon Slayer Mugen Train in terms of quality. Some people are comparing it to the Heaven's Field trilogy, which is just retarded. The movie is good, I get it but the Heaven's Field trilogy is close to perfection in terms of visuals. Not only should they not be on the same tier, they shouldn't even be on the same tier list. As for comparing it to Mugen Train, I'd say they're about the same quality visually. I'd say Mugen Train edges out just a little bit. Jujutsu Kaisen Zero has more quantity of Sakuga and the quality of that Sakuga is very good, but there's nothing to the level of what Nozomu Abe did for Mugen Train. Like that sequence was a masterpiece. I still study that sequence from time to time. I'll break it down fully when I give Nozomu Abe his well-deserved animator spotlight, which I'll be doing in the near future. And yeah, there's nothing on of that quality in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero's movie, which again, they had the animators to make stuff on that level of quality, but they just had other works to do. And just for the record, neither of these movies come even close to My Hero Academia's movie 3 in terms of animation quality. They do edge it out in terms of compositing and art direction or that shiny flashy stuff. But the sheer quantity and quality of animation in My Hero Academia's third movie is just fucking unmatched. Anyway, compared to the show, how's the movie? It is miles better in terms of both compositing and art direction. The compositing is very good. I really love the colors. The line work pops out perfectly. They do an incredible job complementing the animator's work, which is what compositing is supposed to do. It's not on the same level as Mugen Train, but then again, it's so good that I'd say it comes down to preference. 
Like, do you want a slightly muted composite like Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, or do you want like an overblown composite like Ufortable Shows has? Personally, I prefer the muted kind of compositing like Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, but I just can't help but appreciate the level of compositing that Ufortable is capable of. So I do think Mugen Train is still objectively better in terms of compositing. And the art direction, again, it's better than Jujutsu Kaisen Show. It's not really a high bar to cross. Jujutsu Kaisen Show had pretty awful compositing and art direction. There were times when the compositing was really good, but most of the times it was just dog shit. And for the art direction of the movie, it also goes up and down in quality. Sometimes it's wallpaper worthy. Other times I look at backgrounds and say, yeah, I'm pretty sure I could paint that. But overall, it's good art direction by Jujutsu Kaisen standards, but mediocre to below average if you're comparing it to movie quality art direction. And in this particular criteria, it does not even come close to Mugen Train. The entire opening sequence of Mugen Train has some of the best backgrounds I've ever seen. It's just so fucking gorgeous. And in a world where comics wave movies and Ghibli movies exist, I just can't say that the art direction of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is all that good. The CGI is also a massive improvement for Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Again, that's not a high bar to cross because the CGI in the show was horrible. Even if you're not comparing it to the show though, the CGI quality in this movie is extremely good. In the case of the show, the CGI was mostly done in-house with a little bit of help from Studio Mo. And for the movie, the CGI was done entirely in-house. In fact, almost everything for this movie was done in-house with barely any assistance from other Japanese companies. And it showcases really well that the in-house MAPA's team for CGI can do a really, really good job if they have a better production schedule, which they didn't even get for this movie. As I said before, it's pretty average, but it's still good enough that they were able to do a really good job with the CGI. Overall, the best that Jujutsu Kaisen has ever looked is still in openings one and two of the show, which was done by Shingo Yamashita. He did the storyboard, compositing, and 3D CGI work. But that man is a one in a billion genius at what he does. It's not easy to replicate his work. However, Chainsaw Man seems to be doing just that and seems to be doing a pretty good job at that. So let's finally get into me actually breaking down the clips. 